The first session of this morning is on managing the thesis process. Um, and so Jody and I are going to be focusing on this. And so what we are going to be talking about are planning, time management. Um, and probably a lot of you have recognized, um, uh, if you're new and if you've been here for a while, you already know this, that graduate student is, uh, being a graduate student is a much less structured position um, than being an undergraduate. And um, one of the challenges that we have found with graduate students is often that you've got a lot of different things to do, um, lots of things pulling at your time, but sometimes uh, sort of the deadlines that you have are not very firm, um, or and you really have to make a lot of structure for yourself um, in terms of planning and moving ahead. So we're going to be talking about that for this next section here. Okay. Um, so first, um, well. There's a lot that you can plan yourself to create structure for yourself. The university does give you some very important deadlines that you should be aware of. Um, does this website look familiar to most of you, some of you? Okay. Um, this is for the Office of Graduate Studies. Um, and one of the things that we have circled here is the schedule of dates and submit your thesis. So Jody, do you want to talk about um, sort of thesis completion and deadlines? Sure. Okay. So if you aren't familiar with this website, start to troll through it. Start to become familiar with it. So under the schedule of dates, um, you can print off. Oh, I didn't bring it. Here. Do you want that? No, that's okay. okay. So under the schedule of dates, print off and know when you are to submit your final copy of your thesis. So how many of you are doing a master's research paper? Okay, this does not apply to you. Those of you who are doing a thesis or a dissertation, you have to submit your final document to the atrium. I'm gonna talk about the atrium this afternoon in part B. So there's very, uh, tight deadlines that are attached to this submission process. So know what those dates are. They're usually the very beginning of each semester. So September 3rd, uh, March, sorry, May 3rd, and January 3rd. So I have a, I think we get to it, but mm -hmm. we're going to talk about calculating your dates backwards from your deadlines. Go to this Schedule of dates, print off the PDF, and start to plug those dates into your calendar. For some of you, it might be so far in the future, but just know when you're supposed to be submitting so that you can start to backtrack and think about when do you need to find your committee members? When is your proposal due? And start to meet with your supervisors or your department chairs and talk about when are my deadlines? So even for the MRP, go talk to your supervisors and say, when do you expect my proposal due? And make sure you know what those deadlines are. Under the schedule of dates, they also have a master's degree thesis schedule, submission schedule, and a PhD thesis submission schedule. So these are just pages of the website that I've printed off. Read it through, have a look at this, because there are processes that take longer than you expect. So for those of you, for example, who are in the PhD program, you, as you're getting close to the final defense date, you need to give your final document to your, to your committee six weeks before you plan to defend. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. So make sure that you've read this and you know what those, that schedule is. Okay. All right. So Jody just referred to the fact that you might need up to six weeks to um, determine when you actually need to submit something in order to graduate at the time that you Pass want that to. Um, so we just want to point out a few things here. Let's see. So the Graduate Studies Pass website has lots of information on it, um, as Jody mentioned. So really do take the time to look at it. Um, and what Jody is passing out now um, is a calculator to help you work backwards. Um, because um, especially, I think, if you are doing a master's paper, which um, I mean, both, the, both actually the master's and the PhD, 
you need to figure out how much time you have. So we're not going to go in depth on this handout right now, but it is a very good tool to use to help you start that planning. Um, so that if you are planning to uh, graduate, let's say, uh, next semester, um, this will give you a sense that by mid-February or earlier, you need to have a draft ready. Um, and um, it's often um, kind of surprising how quickly that comes up. Mm -hmm. So this is some, some information for you. So there's also a different version of this on the Grad Studies website. This one I simplified for Dissertation Boot Camp. Um, note the graduate deadline, um, uh, the date to apply to graduate is quite early. So know what those dates are. Um, you can sit down with myself or Lenore or Joanna or Jason Dodd, who's a, a colleague of Joanna's, and work through this. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's nice just to sit down and talk it through with somebody, get the big calendars out that we handed out, one of these, and start to work backwards. Um, and then as you have set up your committees or maybe you already have them set up, Sit down with them and get them to sign off on the dates so that all of you are on the same page for your schedule of dates. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on. Um, so we've just given you this handout. But um, as I said right at the beginning, um, often the sort of the management aspect of managing your time, planning your thesis, kind of going from point A that I've started my graduate program to point Z, I've actually graduated with the degree I intended to come in with. To, uh, um, it's an extreme, I have this uh, graph up here because it's, it's an extremely non-linear process. Um, and I think that one of the issues around managing your time is a lot of people think, great, I will enter my program, I'll do my coursework. As I'm doing my coursework, I'll get some great ideas. I'll develop my thesis proposal. I'll finish my courses. I'll start working on my thesis. I'll work on it regularly. And then I will graduate. Um, and it will be done. Um, and I saw a few little smiles, because some of you know it's not really the way it works. Um, and what happens uh, for most students is that they find that there's this interconnected pattern um, where it's not as if they do one thing and it's done and then they do the next thing. It all intersects and interweaves together. Um, and so this is a little graphic that we'll be going back to about that. So the idea is, yes, you do need to do some research in your, you need to do reading in your field, figure out what's going on. Um, Carol's going to be talking a lot, a lot more about that. You need to do your own original research. Um, you need to do writing, but it's not as if you do one and then the other and then you do the other and it's done. Um, and so that's one of the challenges that I want you to be thinking about, is how do you manage doing all of these things sometimes at the same time? And they're all at different stages sometimes. So um, it's a lot to handle and that's something that um, uh, we'll be giving you some strategies for. So the question I have for you right now is, what do you do to enhance your productivity on your thesis work? Even if you have just begun as a graduate student this fall, I'm sure there are some things that you are doing and thinking about to be as productive as you can, because you have a lot going on. Um, so I'd like you to take a few minutes, um, turn to the people next to you, groups of three or four. And what I would really like you to do is, first of all, if you don't know each other, very quickly introduce yourselves with your name and your program. And I'd like you to do about three minutes of brainstorming. This is really fast on some key things that you have found really helpful. Um, and then we're going to come together as a large group. We're not going to hear from each small group. We don't have that time. But what we, want, what we do want to pull apart are a few of those key things that have been mentioned. Because every time we do this, groups come up with lots of interesting, creative ideas. And it's a great way to hear from each other. Okay, so look around you, find some friendly, smiling people, um, <laughs> introduce yourselves, and I'm going to see where you are in like, four minutes, okay? Okay, I'm going to give you 30 more seconds. In your group, find the thing, 
the idea that was the most unusual one, the best one, the most helpful one, and then that's what I'm going to ask you to, uh, to share with a larger group. Okay, 30 seconds. <laughs> of everything that you've talked about, what's the idea that you'd most want to share with others? Okay, all right, yes. Uh, we mentioned staying involved through, uh, through extracurriculars or volunteer work and whatnot, and okay. through that, 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 that enforced structure kind of forces you to think about, okay, well, I have to stay on top of my, my course okay. or my, my uh, dissertation work so that I can so that it, so I don't fall behind. Okay, great. Because I'm doing these other things. All right, so both sort of keeping a balance, doing things besides being a graduate student, um, but also making sure that you do have some structure um, because that actually is helpful. And people find that they're more productive if they have a lot of things going on. It's actually much easier to procrastinate if you have an entire day to write your thesis than if you say, well, I have a block of an hour here, then I have to do this other thing, then I have another hour here, then I have to do this other thing. So that's actually a key thing for keeping in mind, is that if you have the long unstructured blocks of time, start thinking actively about what you can do to put some structure in place. Okay, other ideas that you'd like to share with the group? I did hear talking. Here's one. Yes. We were talking about spending more time on campus because sometimes when you stay home and work, it's just much easier to get to work. Okay, so finding a place where you are less distracted. For some people, working at home is their good place. For other people, working at home is disastrous, and finding a place on campus is better. Other people even like to move from one place to another, but finding a good, productive place is, I agree, very important. Okay, any other things that you would want to highlight to the group? Yeah? I was saying it's uh, that you're the average of your five closest friends or the people that you spend the most time with. Mm -hmm. So if you surround yourself with your academic advisor, other master's students or PhD students, mm -hmm. you should be in a, a good group to sort of seek mm -hmm. advice and guidance. That's a great idea, yeah. It's looking at the people around you and making sure you're in a positive environment. If you look around and you realize you're not in a positive environment, then it's choosing to leave that and find something else that's going to work more for you. And if you're new, sometimes it takes a while to figure out well, where do you study the best um, but, uh, and where are you most productive, but that's important. So we've got a few things here too, which I'm sure a lot of you talked about. Um, a lot of these are about reducing distractions. Um, we're also gonna talk a little bit about some goal setting. Um, so that too um, can be very important as well. Um, we've already talked a little bit about keeping some deadlines with your committee, with your advisor, creating some. Um, and we're gonna be talking in a bit more detail about creating a daily log, which is a tool that can be really useful. Okay. By the way, we will um, sort of be giving these slides from out to, through to, throughout today to everyone who has signed up, so you will have access to this. Um, so to look a little bit at planning, um, there are lots of ways to think about how you're planning. So one of those is that long-range plan. Um, and of course, lots of people have to-do lists, they prioritize. Um, one thing to think about are start dates. A lot of people get focused on deadlines. When is it due? When do I have to finish it? Um, what I would encourage you to do, along with creating your deadlines, is create your start dates. When do I want to start this aspect of my work? If I'm going to submit a draft of my research proposal to my advisor on November 10th, when do I want to start writing that draft? And actually write that down and record that in your calendar. Um, because that is a way that you know to get started. And that also will help give you structure. Oh, this is when I'm supposed to begin this aspect of my work. And you can do that with lots of different things. Um, so I'm gonna show you a few examples of range planning. A lot of people will actually use um, a tool like Excel to do some planning. So the font here is small. Um, this is the plan actually just for a literature review where somebody has written down that they need to write the literature review, they've broken it up into as many sections, as many little details as they can think of, um, meet with advisor, discuss with advisor, finalize my research question, 
begin researching, outline how to write about it. And then they've got the dates. This is in, starting in February. And they've blocked off when they anticipate that some of these things will happen. I believe in this one, this person meets every other week with their advisor. And so they've done some of their planning around that. Okay. Um, so whether you like Excel or some other format, um, this is also a strategy that you can use where you can go from, I've got this large thing to do, I have to let it write a lit review this semester, to what are the actual steps involved. Joanna, can I just mm -hmm. add to that? Of course. So a plan like this is brilliant, but always expect obstacles or delays. <laughs> yeah. Right? So don't become so fixate on it that if you don't meet that deadline, oh, it all falls apart. This is a dynamic process. Grad school is a long-term commitment. So you continually need to come back to your plan, reevaluate, reset your dates and your goals, always in communication with your advisor or whomever. Mm -hmm. So just because you don't get your whatever, your Lit research review. question done in this week, doesn't mean you failed. It means that something came up you need to reevaluate how you're breaking down your short term goals and reset those dates. So remember, it's a dynamic process. Mm -hmm. yep. Thanks, Jody. Okay. Um, another type of long range planning, because some people say, well, that first example was all very much based on one person's work and not dependent on anyone else. But some of you might be working in a lab situation or with a group where part of your work is also dependent on other people. Um, and you need someone else's lab samples in order to do something else. Um, and so this is just an example of um, a uh, long range planning um, where um, there's a different color for each person in a lab. So this particular student has plotted out, again, they've really broken down what they need to do in the lab, but then they've also broken down who's doing what and how that all comes together. Um, so that then, um, for your individual part, you can kind of see, well, this is where I fit in. Okay, I can't start possibly doing this analysis for another four weeks because this other person in my lab has to do something else. So what am I going to do for four weeks while I'm waiting for those samples? And then you can go back to you know, what other, whatever other plans you have and start saying, well, these are some things that I can do while I'm waiting for this other aspect. Um, and then working together you know, to have, have everything mapped out can often be re really helpful for everyone because then you can see where you're going as a collective. OK. okay. Um, so breaking it down a little bit more, that was long range planning. Um, and of course, these are just sort of small things that we all do. Um, so find some way that works for you. A lot of graduate students say that they'll do multiple things. Um, we did pass out just four month calendars, which some people like. You also got some timetables here. Um, and I'm just gonna pick this up real quickly. A couple of things to do, about, uh, to do with this. Some people just like it for the task list. Write down what you've done. I think something really powerful about having a weekly view of this is that if you use it over the week, you can see both what you've done and what you haven't done. But it can also give you a balanced view. So after a week, you can go back and analyze it and you can say, okay, I really did a good job on keeping on track with the reading that I have to do. Every day, I checked off my reading. Great job. But then you can also look for the gaps and say, well, I was supposed to do writing and I think I got two hours done on one day. So then once you have that information, you can go back and evaluate it. Because you might find some days you don't have a lot of time perhaps for your thesis work, maybe you're TAing, but you wanna aim for this balance over the whole week. Um, and so it can be a good analytical tool, whether you use this, whether it's an Excel sheet, whether you use your Griff mail calendar, it doesn't matter. But some way to keep track, not just of what you plan to do, but what you actually have done. And then to actually go back and evaluate it, because part of it is learning and making changes as you need to. Um, on the flip side is a timetable. A few people that I've spoken to really do use something like this to plan things out hour by hour. But a lot of people find that they just get too stressed out um, and it's not flexible enough for them. 
quick tool for those of you who procrastinate uh, or who have one of those times where you're like, I've just been busy for eight hours, but I couldn't tell you what I've possibly done. Um, an exercise in self-honesty. Take this or something similar at lunch, dinner, and bedtime. Take five minutes and record what you actually did in the three to five hours previously. You really have to be honest with yourself. Um, you can't say, I read when you actually cleaned your apartment. Um, you have to say, I cleaned my apartment. Um, but uh, this can work in several ways. One way is that um, some people say they feel so guilty about writing just for themselves that they clean their apartment when they should have been reading that it actually makes them more productive. Um, another thing, too, that people say is that it's a good analytical tool. If you can keep track for a few days, you'll start to notice patterns. For example, every morning, I never get started until 10. Okay, if you know that, then maybe don't plan to do something really important before 10 a.m. because chances are you're not going to do it. Do something that's perhaps a little easier for you to do if early mornings are not the, a good time for you. Um, so it can be a reflective tool as well. Um, so that's also a tool for you to use as you're thinking about how you do your planning. Okay, so we're going to talk a bit about writing logs, um, and um, this is, I think, a very effective tool for you. Jody, mm -hmm. do you want to come up, or I can pass those out? Uh, sure. Okay. Okay, so this came out of quite a bit of research, and then we implemented it first with the dissertation boot camp, and then we implemented it into the faculty writing retreat, which is like DBC for faculty. And at first, I... I didn't like the idea because I can't stand the idea of journaling. It bores me. Some people love it. I hate it. But what we found out was that those who are successful are, really do keep a writing log. So the way this works is one of the things that we teach um, in the week long of the DBC is setting daily goals. So just step away from this for a second. So we sit down and I've got two hours this afternoon. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna write that article for that journal. It's not a realistic goal. I'm not gonna get that done in two hours. So I really need to think about what's my small goal that I can get done in two hours. So over the course of the dissertation bootcamp week, what we've discovered is that at the beginning of the week, we're not very good at setting goals because they're too big and we don't reach them. By the end of the week, we really understand that my goals were way too big here. They need to be really small. Like maybe I need to draft the introductory paragraph for my proposal and I need to find three sources. And as silly as it sounds, give yourself stars or something that makes you happy when you accomplish those goals. So that at the end of the week, you can look back and you can see which goals did you achieve? Which goals need to move on to the next day's task list? So how that relates to this, here at the top I've got the date. Beside it I have writing time. So two and a half hours this student worked for. Here they log what they accomplished in that two and a half hours and that's hugely important because if we don't actually stop and reflect on what we got done, it just seems like this never-ending process. We never feel any sense of accomplishment. So note what you get done. And then here, we make a writing plan for the next time we come back to that assignment or that essay or that article. So what ends up happening after a week of doing this is I have a much better idea of what I can get accomplished in two and a half hours because I don't really know how much I can get done in two and a half hours of writing. Some days it's great, and some days it's not. So if I start to do this for a week or two weeks, I have a much better idea of what can I get done in two and a half hours, so that when I sit down tomorrow and I do my daily goals, I can be more realistic about it. And I can achieve those, and I can get pretty little stars, I can feel good, I can reward myself, and it builds my motivation. And that's what it's about, is feeling good and building your motivation. Here, the purpose of this second half, 
my writing plan for tomorrow or the next time I come back to this assignment, I'm not going to sit down and reread what I wrote yesterday. I'm going to read this and I'm going to move forward so that I'm not continually re-editing what I wrote yesterday and never moving forward on the writing. So I sit down, I read this, and I have a plan. And then maybe Friday, I schedule in time to reread everything I wrote that week and revise. Otherwise, I continually go back and I keep revising the same thing over and over. So I challenge you to try this for a week or two weeks. Um, a lot of students I know, because you have so many multiple things that you're working on right now, you have probably coursework essays, lab reports, um, tri-council grants that you might be applying for, abstracts for conferences, maybe journal articles you're working on, maybe you're co-authoring something with your professor, maybe you're teaching a class, you have tons of different writing projects. So some students I've seen color code this. So I attach this daily writing log to my lit review for my thesis. And then I have a different one for my paper for this class. I have a different one for the journal article I'm writing. So that I can, when I have time, I can have a better plan. I sit down to work on my journal article. I take this writing log. I can see where I left off and I know where to start. Make sense? So I challenge you. Okay. I'm going to hand out these two. Totally. Yeah. And those okay. as well. Yep. So this, okay. um, here, you talk, I'll pass Okay, let me take one of these top ones. This is the precursor to this. So this one is a really broad, um, take some time at lunch today or, or this evening, write down all the different projects you're working on. What deadlines do you know? Which ones do you need to find out? How do you break down these big projects? You know, I've got to write a lit review for my thesis. That's a big project. So how do I do that? How can I really break it down into small manageable chunks? What sort of deadlines can I give myself? So that's this one. And this works in conjunction with the long-term plan and the daily writing log. This one I designed with a couple of faculty in the faculty writing retreat, and this is a much more detailed plan. So this is kind of the brainstorming, and then this is really getting down to the nitty gritty. And it's got priorities here. So is it a shirk deadline? Is it a tri-council grant deadline? Those are pretty high priority because all grad students need money. Um, is it for my thesis? It's a high priority. Is it for a journal? Maybe it's not so high unless it's a revise and resubmit, and then maybe it gets moved up. So these sort of things, you can book one-on-one -on -one appointments with us, and you can come talk to me or Lenore or Joanna, and we can work through this. Or you can sit down with your supervisor and work through it. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the, I guess the message I'm trying to get to you is be as organized and systematic as early on as you can because it will help you in the long run. Mm -hmm. yep. And I'll just reiterate something that Jody said, is that everything changes. Um, and so you can spend some time planning and know that it will change. We're also giving you lots of tools here, but we actually don't want you to sit down for the next three hours and plot out exactly what you're going to do from now until you graduate. <laughs> um, because that's also probably not the best use of this. These are designed to be flexible tools. So if you're just beginning your um, master's uh, um, work this semester, what you might simply want to do is map out some beginning steps. What are my bigger goals and how do I want to do it? If you're at the point where you're in the, right in the middle of writing and you need to get going, you need to focus some more, then you might want to take some of the more detailed ideas and really flesh those out, okay? So you're gonna have to do a little bit of picking and choosing and evaluating. Um, also too, it takes time. A lot of people find that they have to develop new skills when they're in graduate school because it's unlike anything else. Um, generally in the working world, 
people give you deadlines. You have deadlines, um, and you're accountable for those. If you were an undergraduate recently, again, you have courses that have a beginning and an end point, and then you're done. And so this is kind of a, a different thing. Um, so if you are new, it's OK also to take a while to figure out exactly how you want to do things. Um, and that's why that analysis is important. So try something out, and then if you say, mm, this doesn't work, well, I'd say, well, try it a bit longer. And if it still doesn't work, then you need to sit back and think, why doesn't it work, and how can I tweak it? Or how can I do something else that will lead me where I want to go? And again, um, this is where we come into <laughs> play, because we can be a sounding board for that. Um, so a few other things. Um, so this is the idea of if you have some goals, then with your planning, you can with your daily log, you can evaluate if you've actually done them. This gives you more information about your productivity and about how realistic your goals are. I showed you that big Excel sheet. So the idea is this was the Excel sheet with the literature review. There's just kind of like a big purple block here for about three weeks. Um, beware of those big purple blocks because what does that mean when you actually sit down on Monday morning of March 11th to do something related to a subtopic of your lit review? Um, so when you see sort of a larger idea, then you want to break it down into some of those daily goals. Okay. Um, if you remember at the beginning, I had these little gears, and they're all working together. And I just wanted to emphasize that to you. Um, so you are doing your research um, on your, your own original research. You're doing reading, learning more about what's going on in your field. Um, you're doing writing. You're also TAing, applying for grants, taking courses, all kinds of different things. You could have a lot of different wheels spinning around here. Um, but there are a few key things to keep in mind. And I actually really like some of the things that you discussed at the beginning um, because those are really key to keeping everything organized and being productive and being efficient. Um, <laughs> talk to people. <laughs> That's really important. Um, and um, not just sort of social connections, of course, outside of being a graduate student, but maintain social connections um, within your department, not just with your advisor, but with other uh, faculty members who can assist you, um, give you ideas, and support you in your work with other graduate students. Um, you're part of a community sharing information. Um, and often it's sometimes that little like, conversation in the hallway that leads to a great idea. Or all of a sudden somebody says, oh, well, I can help you with that analysis. I know how to do that. Or I'll show you how to do it. Um, and then you've just saved two weeks worth of work because somebody you happen to meet says, sure, that's my specialty. I'll, I'll help you with that. Or I'll lead you in the right direction. Um, so it's finding a balance between that time that you need to do your work, but also maintaining connections um, within your area. But again, it's about prioritizing and thinking it through. Um, so th think of the thesis process as a conversation. Um, so that means that it's not just something you go off and do, and then you produce it, and that's it. Um, I often um, say that when you're even reading, you're reading a literature in your field as if it's a conversation. Different um, people are talking to each other through their written word to explain their ideas around a certain phenomenon. Um, when you're writing your thesis process, that's also part of a conversation. Um, and it's ongoing. So your thesis is not actually going to be the end all and be all of something that's going to save the world. It's part of that. Um, and that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, and um, again, look for mentors. Your faculty advisor is sort of an obvious one, but there are lots of other people around who can be successful mentors. So that's just something to keep in mind, particularly as you're starting out. Okay. Um, start before you're ready. This particularly, I think, applies to not coursework, um, because you have somebody telling you what to do and when it's due, but to your thesis work. Um, if you've ever been like, well, you know, I've just got an hour. I'm not going to start working on my lit review because it's just a really big job. And I need a full day to start. Um, what you need to do 
is remember that's not actually a very productive mindset. Um, we've just given you umpteen charts about breaking things down. Um, and if anything, I want you to leave this 50 minute time period thinking that yes, there are actually probably many things you could do if you have a half hour of time or an hour of time. Um, so if you have just a little block of time, jump in and get started. Um, in terms of uh, when I look at people who are productive as writers, it's because they write a little bit all the time. They don't wait for inspiration to happen before they write. Even if they feel they don't have many good ideas, they write. And that's what you need to do. And uh, Lenore and Jody, I think we'll talk a lot more in some of their um, sessions uh, throughout the day on the idea of writing and writing constantly. Um, the other thing too is don't wait to do all your research before you start writing. That also won't happen. Um, you're going to do some reading, you're going to start your own research, you're going to start your writing, then you're going to say, oops, I need to go back and do more reading, and that's okay too. So you're going to start your writing, and you might feel that you haven't done all the reading that you need to do. That's okay. Start anyway. <laughs> um, and you can go back to it as you need to. Um, and finally, focus on the process. Um, instead of looking like a stressed out lone swimmer trying to reach the end point, um, you're in a community and you might not always feel smiling and happy all the time while you're doing your graduate work. Um, but the idea is that you are with a group of people and you can learn from them and you're in this experience together and that can be very useful to you. Um, and so that's also something to keep in mind too, that it's not so much that you have to publish the perfect thing but you are in a learning process. And by the time you finish, you want to have learned a lot more than when you started out. And there are lots of ways you can do that. So that's also something to keep in mind. Okay, so we are going to um, end here for this first session.